Hello and welcome to the Quest on Rajya Sabha TV. I am Rakhi Bakshi. As you know, this show gives you a deep insight into the life, career, and vision of a leading personality. And this leading personality this time is Mr. Naresh Gujral. He is a member of Rajya Sabha. Welcome to the show, sir. Uh, one would imagine your childhood under the shadow of your father, a great luminary. How do you look at that period? When I look back, I would say that it was very educative. We always had hundreds of people in the house all the time. He was in politics, so crowds would start coming from literally 7 a.m. and this would go on till late in the evening. Also, how politics was played behind the scene, uh, one learned from him, because uh, you may recall mm. that he was part of Mrs. Indira Gandhi's kitchen cabinet. Mm. So all the wheelings and dealings that took place behind the scenes one was privy to. So it was very educative in that sense. And the Prime Minister of India, Mr. I.K. Gujral and whose son you are, um, somebody who was known as a gentle statesman. And that is something which we really value today more and more, where we really think it should be. So how would you look at that particular individual, also your father? Well, it's very unfortunate that today politics is moving away from service of the people to self-service, to money, mm -hmm. to power for the sake of power. Mm -hmm. You know, after the partition of India and once we got independence, if you recall, most politicians, they were what I would call Samaj Sevaks. They were, they were working for the society. Mm -hmm. They were simple Gandhians simple lifestyles. Service in true sense. And service in the true sense and they came into politics only for that. Mm -hmm. They spent years behind bars mm -hmm. for the sake of the country. Mm -hmm. my, there was a stage in my family when my grandfather, my grandmother, my father and because my two aunts were very young, they were also with my grandmother in jail. So everybody was in jail except my uncle Satish Gujral mm -hmm. who was deaf. So he had to be left out. Now you imagine a situation in a family when a poor deaf boy who is hardly 17 or 18 mm -hmm. is the only child outside and everybody else is in jail. Mm -hmm. So that was a, and ours was not the only family. So many families made th this kind of sacrifice mm -hmm. and these were the people who came into politics. So the whole motivation was different. So what a great atmosphere you actually lived in uh, and you grew up. Uh, what were those gr growing years like you just mentioned um, Satish Gujral, a family where you have a whole lot of creative people, whether it's a painter or a designer, you yourself. In fact, uh, we know that you were a chartered accountant initially. So how was all that? My father was very clear on one thing. He said, look, whatever you do eventually, get yourself a professional degree. Mm -hmm. I hated chartered accountancy because it was very boring, you know, those mundane numbers all the time, but I think it equipped me. Thereafter, I started practicing. I had no money. My father was an honest man. Mm -hmm. So to start a business, I needed some capital. Mm -hmm. So I started. Very surprising to hear actually today. So, well, that's that was life then. <laughs> and uh, fortunately, I, I was a successful chartered accountant. But within years, mm -hmm. I realized that this was not my calling. And I discovered that I had a flair for fashion mm -hmm. and design. Mm -hmm. So I went into the field of design and export of fashion garments. Before you go ahead, why were you not actually influenced by this whole political uh, atmosphere around you? No, I was. But I was very clear mm -hmm. that there could be no politics if one didn't have personal money. Okay. And I had seen how my father, to survive in politics, had literally every year Either he would sell some shares or he would sell some property mm. till a stage came when there was nothing to sell. He, he was just left with one house. Mm -hmm. And I realized that if I have to do, I was clear that I would want to come to politics eventually, mm. but I needed some money uh, of my own mm -hmm. because I was very clear that I would not be beholden to any business group or any businessman. And this was the same man, Mr. I.K. Gujral, who was known so popularly for Gujral Doctrine, something which we kind of, uh, you know, read about and look at. So how would you look at the philosophy uh, as a prime minister, as a statesman that he spread and which is should be so relevant today? Well, the basic uh, thing that he always propounded was that we have to have 
peace with our neighbors. You cannot wish away your neighbors. That is, they are there to stay. So, if you do not have peace with them, and if other powers start taking interest in their affairs and encircle you, like what is happening today, China is taking undue interest in all our neighbors. And in a way, we are encircled, literally from Sri Lanka all the way up to even Bhutan now, although Bhutan is a very friendly country. His point was that these are small countries. Treat them with honor and dignity hmm. and give them more than you get back from them. So that then they have a vested interest in you and remain extremely friendly with them. And also don't forget, small countries, their prime ministers and presidents get offended very quickly if they feel that you are giving them a uh, big brotherly treatment. Exactly, exactly. So his saying was treat them as equals and ensure that their economies also get uh, uplifted. Only then would India be able to rest in peace. Mm -hmm. So how did you go ahead, I mean, as a CA and then on to uh, fashion designing? How was this journey like? Well, I must say when I came to the uh, fashion garment uh, uh, business, it was very tough. I, I had jumped in without a clue only in interest. Uh, early uh, years were very, very tough. I was in debt up to there. Uh, but then I found my feet very quickly. And uh, I was one of the early pioneers of what you see today, what, what most girls are wearing, printed dresses. Okay. In those days, the only prints going out of India hmm. were the ones which were printed in Jaipur you know, the traditional Indian prints. Hmm, hmm. Nobody was doing modern European prints okay. and then doing embroideries on them and sending them out. So in that sense, my company and I were the pioneers in this. Mm -hmm. We had a very good collaboration with a company in France. Mm -hmm. We still have uh, ex exceedingly good relations with them. They are our principal buyers. So the, there is this print story which is coming from you. So there was a situ uh, stage you must have heard of monsoon stores all over mm -hmm. Europe. When monsoon bought a dress from us which I had designed and Princess Diana mm -hmm. on her way to Australia went and bought that dress mm -hmm. and she was seen wearing that dress in Australia, something which royalty never does. Mm -hmm. When they travel abroad, they only wear dresses or clothes which are made in England. Okay. But we found our dress, we publicized it and it received a lot of publicity all over till I got a subtle message from the British High Commission that take it easy. But what a great you know, don't Indian, embarrass them. Indian connection and a royal but, connection yeah, it, it also. Was, it was very satisfying. Yeah. So but we, more than that, it my company very quickly became financially very stable. Okay. So we'll continue talking about all those issues and uh, incidents from your life. But right now we're talking to Naresh Gujral. Don't go away. Keep watching the quest. You are watching the quest right now and we are talking to Mr. Naresh Gujral. Uh, from there on, uh, you moved on to politics. How did that happen? Well, I was very clear that eventually I would come to politics. But when, for a while it got postponed. But when I saw the filth around and the kind of people who were coming to politics, mm -hmm. I was getting restive. I must admit, my wife, even my father, they were not in favor of my coming to politics because they said, you know, you would be a misfit there because the kind of new politics mm -hmm. which has taken over. But I said one day to my wife, I said, if people who are electable mm -hmm. and people who want to do something, mm -hmm. if we all stay out, mm -hmm. then why blame the system? Then the, the people... Be in it and fight. Be in it and fight because only then we have some hope. Mm -hmm. So then I decided to take the plunge. And in 2005, I fought the Lok Sabha election. Okay, and that's how you began. And you became a member of a party which is primarily perceived as a Sikh party, primarily made out of this particular community, and you're a Hindu. So how, did, how does that feel and how did that happen? Well, I must admit, 1984 Sikh massacre moved me a lot. I saw it with my own eyes. How one political party, the ruling party, mm -hmm. was responsible 
for the cold blooded massacre of thousands of Sikhs on the streets of Delhi. I had a Sikh family staying in my house for seven months thereafter. And my father took also a very hard stand on that issue, mm. pro Sikh stand, yeah. where nobody was willing to speak for that community. And I think a kind of a bond developed between our family and the Sikhs. Mm. And also mm. a friendship between Mr. Badal and my father. Okay. Because in 89, when my father decided to fight the election from Punjab, at that time, there was a lot of terrorism in Punjab. I remember when we went for election and we would go campaigning, mm. my mother would say that I don't know which one of you I would see this evening. Mm. That was the kind of fear in Punjab. Do you think Punjab. now there is some sense of judgment? And I mean, how do you feel now? No, I think even today, Sikhs have not received their due. Not one leader who was responsible for the massacre. Today it's 29 years. Who has been punished? I think not only the system, but the judiciary has let down the Sikhs. And that creates a lot of anger in them. And I hope that media pressure... But still there is because of you, you're just talking about because yes. of that, I think... No, I, I must say that media pressure is working, especially the electronic media. I'm convinced hmm. that had television media been as strong as it is now, hmm. that may never have happened. But just like you people brought Gujarat mm. to the national focus, mm. the 84 massacre was never brought to the national focus because of lack of media interest at that time. Okay, so you owe it to that. Uh, regarding some other Sikh issues, if I can talk about right from uh, Sarabji's case, uh, how would you look at that? I mean, somebody we lost. Again, it stems from the fact that Sikhs feel aggrieved they feel that justice has not been done to them. There is an anger in them. And that is why all these things get uh, manifested in this manner. Had justice been given to 84 victims, mm -hmm. had the leaders who were responsible for the 84 massacre been punished, the Sikhs would not have reacted like this. Look, but, but I can tell you that even, even in the parliament, I mean, there, there have been such voices uh, from the ruling party that one feels that justice should be done in this case and then but things are moved. nothing is done. And where, I can tell you one thing, the only time parliament took up the matter seriously mm -hmm. was a couple of years ago yeah. when I mobilized all the opposition parties mm -hmm. and the vice president of India, mm -hmm. who's a true secular person, he gave us permission to raise the matter. Otherwise, we would not even get permission to raise the matter. And the debate went on for the whole day. And that is where the media started to focus on the issue. And thereafter, thanks to the media, it came to the national attention. Mm -hmm. And I do hope that judiciary will now act fast mm -hmm. and punish some people because you cannot alienate one set of people mm -hmm. or one community which has sacrificed so much for this country. We talked about Sarabjit, but let's look at uh, Bhullar's case that you took up as a party. Uh, how would you... Again, as it? I said, I am not saying don't do anything to Bhullar. The, let justice prevail. But just, it, justice must be seen to be prevailing. You cannot, in isolation, pick up just one case and hang the guy. When his co-accused those cases are still going on. What if tomorrow they are exonerated and you hang this gentleman? But isn't it a political so compulsion, was, very party based? No, no, what, what we said was, postpone it. Don't be in a hurry. Let the other cases be decided. Mm -hmm. When the other cases are decided, don't forget, Bhullar didn't even go to high court. Only the lower court has, you know, uh, punished him. His co-accused, those cases are going on in the high court. Let those cases be decided. What if they are exonerated? He also will get exonerated, you know, uh, automatically. But before that, if you hang him, mm. would it be fair? So we, think, what we I said was, uh -huh. let's postpone it, delay it, so that one whole community does not get alienated further. You ought, I think these are also very party-based issues that uh, I think one must raise. But uh, uh, looking at... No, I'm, I'm, I disagree with you. Let me tell you one thing. We in Parliament, we enact laws to keep the society 
sane and civilized. But if the same law that we have passed, hmm. if by executing it in a hurry, you are going to unleash uncivilized behavior okay. in a hu huge state mm -hmm. and put the nation's security at peril, then I think sometimes wisdom has to come in yeah. and by postponing something for a few months, heavens will not fall. Okay, so we'll talk about such more uh, serious issues also in our further segment. But right now we are heading for another short break. Don't go away again and please keep watching The Quest. We are talking to Mr. Naresh Kujra. You're watching The Quest right now and we are talking to Mr. Naresh Kujral. You know, we were talking also about the parliament since you've thrown uh, light on this uh, uh, esteemed in institution and a pillar of democracy. How do you feel when parties just raise voices and there is all these disruptions happening because the monsoon session is just about to begin uh, and the actual debate gets lost? No, I am against disrupting parliament. We had a little group also that would protest every time parliament would be uh, disrupted. But unfortunately, sometimes what happens is, if the government of the day mm. turns a deaf ear to the real issues mm. and does not want to debate it, then the opposition has no other choice. Yet I am not justifying the fact that parliament is getting disrupted so often. Mm -hmm. I wish there would be more debate. Because that is the most powerful instrument in democracy. Exactly. By debate, you can convince, the, if not the ruling party, but at least the people of this country. Mm -hmm. Because today, you people are active. So even if... We have a, even a if, lot of laurels during the, this no, interview. No, but even if the government is unwilling to listen to us, when we debate, the people of this country are listening. Mm -hmm. So I am all for debate mm -hmm. and not disruption. And as a party now, you know, you're, uh, you have said also recently and talking about relationship with BJP or being in an alliance, how strong is that even now? Well, we have been their most steadfast uh, alliance partners for a long time. And you must understand the basis of this alliance. This is not an opportunistic alliance. Mm -hmm. Why was this thought of? And I would give a lot of credit to Mr. Prakash Singh Badal. You know, the Hindu Sikh bhaichara or unity or affinity mm -hmm. that had got ruptured during the days of insurgency. Mm -hmm. That had to be re-established. We had to, that is the, I would say the lifeblood of Punjab. Mm -hmm. The Hindu Sikh unity, Hindu Sikh bhaichara, there were inter, uh, there were marriages That's why you see the major other. connection. That had got ruptured. When we made this alliance with BJP, that was primarily the reason and as a result you will see thereafter the way Hindu Sikhs are again bonded in Punjab. Mm -hmm. It had never happened before. And why I put this question to you because there is a there is an individual, there is a name uh, around which everything is being talked about and that is Mr. Narendra Modi's name. Uh, within the party that is BJP there were certain voices which were different uh, when it was being talked about his leadership or his increasing role in the party. Uh, how would you or your party would look at that? I mean, if Mr. Narendra Modi is projected tomorrow by the uh, alliance as a future prime minister. We candidate. have announced already, Mr. Prakash Singh Badal is on record to say we have no objection. And there is a reason again. Today, there is a serious crisis in this country and that crisis is economic crisis. Growth rate is coming down. The rupee plummets by the day. 16 crore people are without jobs. One in three youth is looking for a job. There is a sense of hopelessness. And the economy is down to its knees. Mm -hmm. If you see the way the budget was crafted, we were all saying at that time mm -hmm. that there cannot be a 6.5% growth. Mm -hmm. But all the budgetary figures were worked. How are you connecting this I'm, economy? I'm coming yeah. to it. Was coming on a six and a half percent growth, mm -hmm. they said we will receive so many, so much revenue, mm -hmm. so the budgetary def deficit would be controlled. Yeah. Now, when the growth is less than five yeah. percent, your budgetary deficit is ballooning up. You are now going to put the initial burden of food security. So the primary thing is e economics. The primary thing is 
let me answer. Yeah. The primary thing is that economy should be the main question. Mm. But the Congress party is trying to divert attention and trying to make it into a secular versus communal divide. That is where Mr. Narendra Modi comes in. He is being painted as a communal person. I want to ask the Congress party or the ruling party, who was responsible for the 84 massacre? Congress party was directly responsible for the 84 uh, massacre. And I do hope that you will not cut this part when you, when you edit the program. Not one of their leaders has been punished. And they call themselves secular. And others who are today proclaiming to be secular, I want to ask them, where have they been hiding since 1984? Why did they not raise their voice? Because today they want the Muslim vote. They talk of secularism. Okay. So, let's move on to one uh, b b bill that you refer to, that's food security. And isn't that something that uh, the nation needs? Uh, something Absolutely. That Absolutely. But why after nine and a half years, when there are six months to go for elections? Why? Wh why? They could have done it earlier. Today, I want to tell you, in Punjab alone, 12 and a half million tons of wheat mm. is rotting in the open. In Haryana, another 6 million is rotting in the open. We have not even been able to build go-downs for this food. So, what's ideally so that what food security? would you support? We it? welcome it because the poor of this country need to be fed. But don't use it for political purposes. Today, the intent is to get votes in the name of food security, not to feed the poor. And of course, everybody wants to be taken along. Um, uh, now, coming back to you again, um, uh, as a person who has such a, who had such a varied kind of interest and career, uh, what are your interests and hobbies that you work on? Well, I love gardening. I am a collector. I collect a lot of art, mainly modern art, uh, some antiquity. Uh, I love music. Mm -hmm. uh, Amjad Ali and I went to school together. We have, our friendship still abides. So, I have varied interest. And you think politics and creativity can gel together? Why not? So basically, what has started happening is that people who have good education, mm -hmm. people who come from good backgrounds, mm -hmm. today they don't want to come to politics because they say, oh, it's very dirty. This is a dirty game, so let's not enter. Tell, show me a middle class person or an upper middle class person who will tell his son mm -hmm that come to politics. He will say, son, be a doctor, be a chartered accountant, be an engineer, be a businessman. Do you think the trend changing now? I hope so. If this country has to survive, this trend must change. And younger, educated people with some means of their own, they must come into politics. But at the same time, we have to do something collectively. The way elections have become so expensive, hmm. frightfully expensive. Yeah. The role Very of, valid point. The yeah. role of booze, the role of a gunda, the role of muscle men, we have to control a that. A question I could have asked you anyway. This and whole ethics and add? morality. No, no. And one more thing. Today, the highest expense is on paid media. Today, the biggest blackmailers are the regional newspapers. We must con control that. I've been going to the chief election commissioner but time and again. Are you raising it? Are you raising it? I issue? keep going to the chief election commissioner. I've done it so many times. This is their job. What it is not our job. The, the government of the day and the chief election commissioner, they have to ensure that the role of money, the role of the gunda gets diminished. Yeah, so more ethic and morality, which Absolutely. everybody is looking at. Absolutely. Uh, the last question, your dream, Mr. Naresh Kujral. Or the, or the road that you look for yourself. Well, I, for myself, I am very happy doing what I am doing. But yes, the dream is to see growth back in the country to I want to see hope coming back in the lives of our youth. Today they are losing hope and that is very dangerous for the country. And that will only happen if there is genuine inclusive growth where all communities feel that they are safe. I talk of Sikhs, I talk of Muslims, I talk of Christians, I talk of all minorities. They must have a feeling that they're completely secure in this country. So a healthy nation, that's what you look at. Thanks a lot and all the best for all the things that endeavors that you're into. And that was Mr. Naresh Gujral and you were watching The Quest. Hope you like this edition of The Quest. Thank you. Namaskar.